What is going on everyone? My name is Boyd and I am back with some more Age of Mythology The Extended Edition action. This is a new series called Road to 2K, inspired by some chess and League of Legends videos I've seen in the past. The idea of this series is to showcase some styles of play that work at different levels of skill. There are four main categories that make a strong AOM player and will be important to know about. Macro, Micro, Strategy and Decision Making. Macro is essentially everything to do with the economy, how we spend our resources and how we gather them. Micro, on the other hand, is an advanced concept that allows us to get the most out of our units by controlling them in a specific way. Strategy and decision making are similar to Macro and Micro in that strategy is very important to our overall gameplay and decision making is geared towards more high level understanding of the game. I'm going to be playing random gods in this series. This means I won't always know the best strategy to use, so don't copy me exactly. In this first game, unfortunately I match up against the 1700, so this might be more of a glimpse into the second episode. I roll the Chinese god Shenon, which I've played like once before, and the map Midgard, so I feel pretty out of my depth here strategically. Oftentimes, against low level players, they don't even bother fishing. So you can get away with quite a bit by simply spamming fishing ships on the water. Unfortunately for me, I attempt to scout out what my opponent is doing with the Chinese scouts and miss their docks, thinking he isn't fishing, so I make some poor decisions which result in me losing the water. I advance at about the 4 minute mark, which means I'll hit the classical age at 5 minutes. I have no idea which god is better, so I pick the one that looks the coolest. This is probably about 30 seconds too late, and if I were playing at a very high level, I'd probably get punished. Something of importance here to do with the macro of the game is swapping villages around when advancing to the classical age. It's something high level players do pretty much with every race on every map, so make sure you just do it. I also cast my wood gathering GP so that I can produce some more docks and fishing ships while I advance to abuse what I think is free water. When I hit the classical age, I grab the fishing upgrade and start producing some barracks in order to defend any sort of land rush that he might be planning. I decide at 6 minutes when he hasn't attacked me at all to be super greedy and grab a second town center. Against a strong player, this would probably get punished, but I'm looking for a relaxing win by just outbooming my opponent and this is the easiest way to do it. I spot him building some aggressive docks and realize I've made a mistake and missed his initial dock. So I bait him into going hard on the water by producing another dock and a couple of archer ships. At this point, if I lose water, I'll be able to easily catch up in villages by having more town centers anyway. It also gives me a great opportunity to get map control and gold staff super easy. Here you can see he's got a ton of boats while I only have a couple. It's quite obvious he's fallen for my little trick. This is something you can pretty much do at all levels of play. And it's very hard to gain much from the water if you overcommit and build too many archer ships. I'm grabbing my third town center as a bit of a safety play here, just because I don't want to wind up losing the game if I simply lose my army. I'm going for map control now as my army is spamming from three or four barracks, and there isn't much you can do to stop me from raiding and kicking him off gold until he hits the heroic age due to Chokanu's power against classical age Egyptian units. He hits the Heroic Age through Sekhmet, which is to be expected as I've spent so many resources on my economy and army. That being said, I'm not concerned about anything he can do at this point. As long as I maintain line of sight on every gold mine, he's not going to be able to build any army. If you ever get any map control, don't just settle for having it with your army. Build some military buildings close to the area so you can have defenders advantage. Defender's advantage is when you are producing military units right into where the fight is taking place. After preventing his villagers from getting gold for long enough, he decides to go for the fight with Eclipse, but unfortunately for him, it is too little too late and my army easily defeats his without too much hassle. The big things for those of you out there sitting at the level that my opponent was this game is that you need to be more proactive. If you see your opponent getting town centers, you need to either do the same or do some damage to your opponent. Otherwise, you're going to fall behind in economy, tech, and army. Also, if you're hoping to get past this level, you can use the strategies I employ here to give yourself a significant advantage over your opponent. One, scouting whether they're fishing or not and booming on the water if they're not. 
Two, grabbing early talent centers to get a significant economic advantage over your opponent. And three, if your opponent fights water, bait them to go hard with it and then go strong on the land to win with a gold starve. In my second game, I find an opponent quickly and he is close to my rating, which means I can start doing some funky stuff to get super quick victories. I roll Kronos and decide to do a Kronos rush, but I couldn't remember how many villages to build, so I ended up doing a slower advance with a slightly stronger economy. In lower levels, this might make an opponent think they're safe from the crush, which allows you to do some more significant damage. Here you can see the small confusion I had when I realized I needed an extra five wood. I think there is a way to do this build more efficiently, but I don't know what it is, so this would have to do. Again, like in the first game, when I click on the classical age, I transfer villages to more needed resources. For this game, I went two food, two wood, and then two gold. You can see my inexperience with the crush here, as you need to have an oracle in place a little bit before you hit the classical age, so you can time shift your temple. It only marginally slows down my rush, and against low level players, simply rushing is enough to make them panic quite a bit and get easy wins. I cast Valor as soon as I hit the Classical Age and begin my attack. I didn't have good scouting of his resources, so I didn't know where to attack. I think if I were to do this strategy again, I'd delete my first Promethean and scout with the Promethean offspring in order to find the places to attack. Luckily I spot his home gold mine on the side I picked to put my buildings, which means I'm easily going to be able to push him off gold. I should have used Deconstruct straight away on the mana, but I thought he would upgrade his towers and stop my attack. That being said, he didn't have any towers in Rage to protect his gold mine, so that was probably a silly thought anyways. Once I had secured his home gold mine by killing the mana, I could search for the other gold mines and close the game out. If you ever find yourself fighting against players that do these kinds of rushes at this level, just remember they are sacrificing a lot of economy, so you normally just need to survive and you'll win the game. Focus on defending and you'll be okay. A neat little trick you might want to try to get free wins at low levels is to name yourself after a well-known pro player. Try AOM King or Magyar and people might just call you a name and then resign, as what happened here. I roll set against an Atlantean player and I really don't want to deal with any Atlantean abuse. So I decided to do a pretty brutal set strategy. It's almost a cheese strategy, but it pretty much is guaranteed get damage, so you can't really call it cheese. I advanced super fast through Anubis, and like every other game, I shuffle my villages around to suit my next plan. This one's grabbing a couple of priests and then a quick second town center. I send my Pharaoh forward super early, I think I could wait till about 50% research for my classical age, but I was eager to finish the game quickly. Sometimes doing these kinds of aggression makes people resign straight away. Again, I get super lucky with a forward gold mine, which essentially means I can stop gold income from there and win the game really fast. When he starts going hard for the gold mine, I cast serpents to tank some damage from the tower and cause a bit of havoc in an effort to make him press the resign button, but he was a little bit stubborn. As a side note, if you are a low level player, you really shouldn't be clicking the resign button early ever because you can learn a lot from playing from behind and also anything can happen in low level games so you just never know. But to be pretty brutally honest, you probably don't know you were behind until it's pretty clear so best just wait it out and try your best and see what happens. I do this little sneaky micro trick to make my priests and fairy not walk into the tower fire by setting them to passive stance. The default hotkey for this is Alt and S. It doesn't work 100% correctly here in the extended edition, but essentially it's supposed to force units to stand still unless otherwise instructed so they don't run into tower fire. At this point, I'd done so much damage to his economy and I had boomed pretty hard, so I pretty much just needed a siege weapon to walk in and knock down his town center. I decided to go segment and grab myself a couple of scarabs to win the game. I got lucky again and found where he sent his villages to gather resources, and that was enough to make him tap out. So my poor scarabs got no action. So sad. This sort of strategy can be very micro intensive, so don't recommend it. But if it is your cup of tea, it can be your ticket to some free elo. 
If you're facing the strategy as Atlantean, just grab your home base towers super quickly and you should be able to defend easily. If you get an unlucky map spawn, there isn't much you can do, unfortunately. My opponent from last game asked me for a rematch and it is dishonorable to ever refuse such a request. So I queue up and face his Gaia again, this time with Shinon. My advance time isn't horrendous, but it really doesn't do justice to the power that the Chinese civilization has in the early game. You want to be advancing around the 4 minute and 30 mark, not the 5 minute 15 mark. He forced me to do some micro tricks with my villagers to maintain the forward location. I want to put military buildings there, so it's really important that I hold on to this. A common theme we're going to see in these games is fast second town centers while trying to be aggressive. This doesn't work in high levels of play, but in low level games, you can get a significant advantage from doing this. However, if you're still learning, I think just chill with the aggression and focus on macroing well. You know, as Day9 says, probes and pylons, probes and pylons. Translated to AOM, villages and houses, villages and houses. I start putting pressure on my opponent and you can see the amount of stuff we could do before he even starts producing military. I'm not trying to badmouth him, but it's the seven minute mark and I've got more military than he has and he's still in one town center. It's, it's simply macroing efficiently or even not efficiently, just at a decent level. Uh, he's raiding me though, which is a little bit of pain, but I can just produce a couple of heroes and defend against that. You can see it's about the 10 minute mark and he hasn't really been able to mine too much gold from his home gold mine. I should have realized he'd have hunters outside his base and he would have moved them towards a gold mine and started mining it, but I missed it. So on to finishing the game with some siege weapons instead of stopping him from mining gold. I grab the heroic age miner god that gives me uproot. I remember it being super oppressive in the early launch of AOM extended edition, but I think it was nerfed or I got unlucky because it didn't really do that much damage. I build a palace in front of his base and go to the mythic age to see what the Chinese god powers do. You get three uses of a giant dragon. He doesn't have much range though and I didn't put him close enough to the town center because I didn't know. Luckily I have my palace and I can just siege it down with some catapult. It seems like you can control all three of the enemy town centers with this god power if you use it right. Wow. I tried to show how to close out games against those that stick around to the bitter end here. So just remember to grab town centers, make villages, grab economic upgrades and advance through the ages. If you feel like you've done enough damage to them, it's going to be fine. This is the game that gives me 1700. It's a bit of a tester game really, Gaia vs Loki. This matchup is truly one of the hardest to play at the top level because Loki's design is the exact thing which Gaia struggles against. Heroes and myth units. Because she has no access to Valor, dealing with myth units spawning is not an option. So I go for a very sneaky cheese strategy which I saw back in 2007. A fast heroic into Stymphalian bird spam. The build order is actually super simple and I even remember it after all these years. Essentially, you go two villages food, one village of wood, one village of gold, four more villages food, grabbing all the archaic upgrades as soon as possible, then advancing to the classical age. When you get to the classical age, you get the speedy villager upgrade, and then you can go straight to the heroic age. I go through Oceanus and not Leto because I want to be able to heal my birds as they'll take a small amount of damage from trolls and throwing axemen, but never enough to kill them. Also, Leto offers nothing against what Loki does. I throw an armory down uh, and pray that he's not going to start attacking me super early. That being said, I did position my billings fairly well, so if he were to run into my base to attempt to raid, he'd take a significant amount of town center fire before he deals any sort of damage. My hunt villages are exposed though. It's a bit of a risk. I could have and probably should have brought them back onto goat, but I took the risk and it worked out for me. As you can see, I hit the heroic age super early at six minutes and 45 seconds. 
I think you might be able to shave a villager off this strategy and get to the heroic age even earlier, but I'm not sure, and your economy could be pretty bad. I start building Carabaluster and Stymphalian birds straight away and start harassing my opponent's military units. I could send the birds to attack his gold mine, but at this point I want to make sure he's not massing more units than my birds can deal with if he attacks me. And picking off units for free, it's just such a good feeling. We pretty much just have the one fight where my Carabalus will do absolute work against his Hersa, and the birds pick off anything else that spawns really quickly. It's really hard for Loki to deal with this strategy if I sit back and let you do it, which makes it perfect for low level games. Another small strategic thing you can do against many players who use auto queue is leave your army near their military buildings and pick off their units as they come out. You can get a lot of free military unit kills if they do this and they don't notice. Anyways, we're 1700 now. This has been the episode number one of Road to 2K. If you liked this series, I'd really appreciate some feedback. If you didn't like it, that's cool. But regardless, please rate, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys next time.